Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to show you how to take your photos looking like this to looking like this using one hidden Lightroom feature. So with that let's get into Lightroom and start editing. Alright, so now that we're in Lightroom I'm going to show you some images um, before, after, and then how we achieve those effects. So this first image was backlit, which you know, we do a lot as photographers, but the problem is, is we lose a lot of detail in the sky. So you can see here's uh, the before, this is straight out of camera, and this is after I've applied my base preset, um, but I haven't used any of the tools yet. All right, and here is the image after we've applied um, this tool that I'm going to teach you guys about. So we are going to learn today about range masks. Um, if you don't know what they are, that's great, that's why you're here. So in Lightroom, we've got two tools right here. We've got the radial filter and we've got the graduated filter. These are super awesome tools that uh, you know I use all the time, but there's something right here called range mask. Um, and not a lot of people really know about this. Um, I'm gonna show you how to use it and how it can seriously take this image to this image with like three clicks. So the first type of range mask I'm going to apply is going to be color. So I'm going to drop a radial filter and I'm going to have it cover both of the people in the image. And I'm gonna come over to range mask and I'm gonna turn it on to color. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to select certain colors within your radial filter and it will only affect those colors. So I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and I'm going to sample a section of her skin, just like that. Now, if you hit O, it shows the tool overlay and you'll see that anything that's red is being affected by the radial filter right now. I have my feather at zero, that's why you're seeing this harsh line. So once you've selected a sample of the color that you want to edit, you come over to the amount tool and you can either slide it up to affect more range of that color or less range of that color. So I'm gonna slide this down until it's only affecting their skin, which is pretty much at zero. Um, so at this point, it is only affecting their skin. You can see it's uh, affecting some of their hair because they have highlights in that, but it's not affecting his shorts or her nails or her bracelets or anything like that. So once I have that selected, I'm gonna to toggle zero or oh, sorry, to turn off my overlay. And now I'm going to edit this filter and you'll see that it will only edit their skin and nothing else. So because this image is backlit, I'm gonna bring up my exposure. And because I brought up my exposure, it's uh, kind of doing some weird stuff to their skin. So I'm going to bring my clarity down just a little bit to kind of soften their skin. And the other issue that I'm running into here is they both look kind of cold. Their skin tone is really cool. So I'm gonna bring the saturation up just to make them look a little bit more lively and warm. And I'm going to add just a little bit of yellows to their skin to make it even more warm. Um, and I might even pull up the shadows just a little bit. So you can see how quickly we can go in and just affect their skin. This is before, this is after. Okay, so color is a super nice tool, especially if you're just wanting to affect you know, certain colors in the image. So now we're going to adjust a new radial filter. And I actually want to apply this to the whole image. So I'm gonna zoom the image out so that I can drop a radial filter and cover the entire image. And once again, um, typically if I'm doing this, I want my feather down to zero and I have the radial filter set to invert. And this time I'm going to apply a luminance range mask to the image. So luminance affects the exposure or the brights or the shadows and you can kind of select. So under this tool, you'll wanna to turn on show luminance mask and once again, whenever you have your mask on in Lightroom, anything that's red is what's being affected. So with this radial filter, I just want to affect the highlights or the bright areas of the image. So I'm going to bring my range up. Um, on your range tool, the bottom end is your shadows and blacks and the top end is your highlights and whites. 
So you can see as I bring my range up, you'll see that they start to turn black or gray. Um, and so now anything that's dark is not really being affected. So this isn't going to affect their skin tones or some of the crests and the waves. Now on this tool, you can also affect the smoothness. And if you bring it down, it's going to affect more specific areas. Um, you can see here there's not a lot of feathering happening in these areas. And if you bring your smoothness up, it's going to feather and it's going to basically just affect the whole image. Um, I like to keep this around 50. Sometimes I'll pull it down a little bit. But you want to be careful not pulling this tool down to zero it, or else it will make the range mask look uh, obvious and will kind of do some weird things to the edges of the range mask. So once we've got it affecting what we want, we can turn off our luminance mask and we can just adjust the highlights. So I'm going to pull my exposure down and that's basically all I'm going to do for that one. Um, ooh, never mind. I'm going to bring the highlights down just a little bit. And you can see if I zoom in here, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more to like this area. You can see here how there's this uh, soft line happening. Watch what happens if I bring my smoothness down to zero. You see how that line gets a little bit more defined. And if I come over to this area of the image, you can see um, kind of the weird things that it's doing to the water. It makes the edit very obvious. So I want to keep our smoothness up and I'm going to pull it up just a little bit more to help soften out some of those lines. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to show you the second tool that I was talking about in the intro. And this is actually under your brush tool. And this is the only image that we're going to use this one on. But under your brush tool, you have a feature called auto mask. If you turn your auto mask on and you pull your brush tool over to the screen, if you see the plus button that's inside the middle of the brush overlay, it's going to take a sample of that area and it will only brush what's like that area, similar to the color and exposure. So this is a really nice tool if you need to quickly brush some things, but you don't want to zoom in and brush around subjects or skies to make sure it's not affecting them. So for this one, I actually want to adjust the color of the water um, just because this was at sunset and the water's looking really murky and kind of bland and I want to pull some more blues in since blue is contrasting color to yellow uh, and it will make the image look better overall. So I'm going to turn on my auto mask and start brushing. Now if you start brushing and you don't see anything like I am now, if you hit O on your keyboard, it will bring up the tool overlay and it will show red where you're brushing. So it's a really nice tool just to turn on while you're brushing. Now you'll see as I come over here and brush, it's only sampling what's inside that little plus and it's not going to brush his skin, but you will notice it's sampling some of the blue from the water and brushing a little bit on his blue swim trunks, uh, which is not necessarily a big deal. Sometimes the more uh, perfect you use with the brush, it becomes more obvious that you've done something. But this is a really nice tool because you can quickly come in and brush areas like the horizon line and not worry about getting your brush tool on the horizon line or uh, subjects, mountain ranges, trees. It's just overall a super useful tool to use. And you can see, you know, as I brushed over here, it didn't brush anything on the female in the image, um, but it did get a little bit here. So another uh, quick feature, I'm, I'm a huge fan of hotkeys. If you hold down the option or alt key, it will just bring up the rush, sorry, erase version of the brush tool. Um, and you can just kind of come in and make some fine tune adjustments and just erase right there. I'm going to hit O to toggle off my mask so I can actually see the edits that's being done. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some blues into the brush and that looks super fake. Um, no water is ice blue like that. So I'm actually going to add in some greens as well to make the water look a little bit more natural. Uh, and I think I went a little bit overboard there. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. Um, and there you have. Um, just with those simple tools, we were able to you know, take the image 
and make it vastly different and not have to worry about you know going into making selective edits. So let's jump over to another image. So here we have a backlit image. Um, you know, this was an engagement session up in the mountains. The sun is actually directly behind the couple um, right now. And when that happens, you typically lose a lot of detail in the sky. So this is the straight out of camera image. Um, and this is after my edit has been applied. And you can see, you know, we've lost a lot of really cool detail in the sky. And this alone is a great image. I'm not saying this is bad, but these tools can really help you elevate your images and bring out some awesome details. So we're gonna use a graduated filter for this one. And we're gonna drag. Um, typically with graduated filters, I will start out of the image and drag down um, just to get a nice feather across the whole image. But with something like this, I'm just wanting to affect the sky. I'm just gonna drag here and kind of pull down like this. And for this one, we're gonna use luminance. So I'm going to turn on my range mask to luminance. I'm gonna show my luminance mask. You'll see anything that's red is being edited. Uh, I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit to make sure it's covering the whole sky. And I'm going to bring my range up so I'm not affecting my couple. And I'm going to bring my smoothness down just a little bit. And I like to use graduated filters for the sky sometimes so it can kind of filter down. It looks a little bit more natural if the top of the sky is darker and it kind of blends in a little bit rather than having the whole sky be the same exposure. So now that we've got the range mask selected, we're just gonna turn off our luminance, showing our luminance mask. And I'm gonna pull the exposure down. I'm gonna pull my highlights down. And I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and increase my saturation just a little bit. Now you can see when I did that, it actually darkened the couple as well. So I need to go back into my luminance mask and I need to refine it just a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom into the couple and make sure there's no red on them. So I'm gonna bring my smoothness down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring my range mask up just a little bit to make sure that they're not being affected at all. And I'll turn that off. And with just a few clicks, you know, we've gone from that to that. And we haven't really had to worry about brushing, you know, the mountain range and not missing anything. Um, the other thing that I want to affect on this image is that I just want to brighten up my couple's face just a little bit. So I'm going to drop a radial filter over them. I'm going to turn my feathering up just a little bit. And I'm going to use a color range mask. And I'm just going to zoom in and sample some of her skin. I'm gonna turn on O so I can see what it's affecting. And I'm going to bring my smoothness down so it's just affecting their skin. And you know, obviously her skin is pretty yellow. It's going to affect her hat and sweater as well, which I'm okay with. And I'm going to turn off my tool overlay and I'm just gonna bring up my exposure just a little bit. And I'm actually going to color correct a little bit and add some magentas to them. And you can see the difference that just that radial filter makes. Uh, really brings out our couple. We're gonna move on. This is actually a same an image from the same session as the previous one. Um, you know, we have this beautiful sky, the sun was setting, it was super pretty. And you can see here in the straight out of the image, I actually underexposed it so I didn't clip any details in the sky. Um, but when I apply my preset, kind of blew out the sky a little bit. And when I edited it to look good, the sky lost a lot of its magic and its detail. So once again, we're gonna start with a radio filter and we're gonna just start about middle of the sky, drop it down, apply range mask, luminance, and we're gonna show our luminance mask and we're going to pull this up so it's only affecting the highlights. And we'll bring our smoothness down just a touch. And we'll turn off showing the luminance and we'll just bring our exposure down and our highlights down. And we get a lot of the magic back from the sky. Now you'll see it affected our couple again. So I can go in and refine my range mask or another really fast, easy thing to do is on both radial filter and graduated filters, you can go in and refine your adjustments using the brush tool. So if you select brush here, I'm going to click erase. 
I'm just going to erase this radial filter from our couple so that I don't lose any of their detail or contrast so they still stand out and look awesome. And there's a quick fast change. Now this third one is um, probably one of my, or fourth one, sorry, is probably one of my favorite changes. Um, this was a bride I shot in Baltimore. We went to a really cool area called Graffiti Alley and we did some really cool pictures here. Um, obviously the bride has some gorgeous reds in her bouquet and her hair and her lipstick. Now the problem was, is there was a lot of red in Graffiti Alley as well. Uh, and I felt like it took away from the image. Um, you can see in this image she stands out much more being the only red in the frame. So I wanted to get rid of all the f reds in the frame. Now the problem is, is it's kind of everywhere uh, and I don't want to go in and brush all of this out and take care of it. So I'm going to zoom out of the image and we're going to apply a radial filter to the whole image. It's on invert, feather is at negative, and we're going to turn our range mask to color. And we're going to select our eyedropper tool. I'm gonna fit this. Now with your eyedropper tool you can make selections like this. Um, or you can hold or just click down and it will sample that color. Now the nice thing is you can add up to four samples. So I want to make sure I'm covering all of the reds in this image. So if you hold down the shift button, you'll see the eyedropper turns to a plus. And I'm going to sample some reds from different areas of the images to make sure that we are getting a good sample of the reds. So you can see here we've got four different samples of the reds. We're going to place the eyedropper tool back. I'm going to turn on my range mask and I'm going to pull my smooth this down so it's really only affecting the reds. I'll turn my range mask off and I'm going to just pull my saturation down to zero. And you can see here there's still a little bit tint of red so we can kind of refine that with our smoothness. So I can actually pull my smoothness up just a touch. And you can see the saturation got rid of most of the red, but there's still like a pink tint. So I'm actually going to add some blues to that to kind of get rid of it. Now you'll notice one sucky thing. Our bride looks like she's a zombie now. So to fix that, I'm just going to pull in the brush tool. I'm going to turn it on to erase. And I'm going to erase all the stuff that I want to stay red. So I'm just gonna erase her face so we make sure to get nice pretty skin back, make sure her hair really pops back into the image and we're going to erase her bouquet so we don't lose any of the reds from her bouquet. And with that simple fix we really refined this image and made her stand out even more. So those are range masks in a nutshell. All right, so hopefully you learned something from the video, and I think I said um like 4,000 times, so there's that. I will work on that in my next video. Um, but just know these tools are super handy, but they can be overdone super easily. So when you start using these, just remember everything in moderation. If you do it too much, it's gonna be super obvious that uh, something was changed. So, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. And now it's time for my shameless plug. I am currently working on filming and putting together an all-inclusive Lightroom course that's going to include everything from importing and organizing your photos in the library to quickly find stuff. Every single aspect of editing your images, all the hidden features, the tips, the tricks, speeding up your workflow and exporting your images for different uses like print or for social media or delivering to clients. So if you follow the link down below and drop your email and sign up for the list, you'll be the first one to know when the course launches. And I'm gonna give you a 50% off coupon for the course when it launches, so it'll only be $99. So don't forget to follow the link below, sign up with your email, and let me know what you thought about the video below. And if you have any questions regarding editing, let me know so I know what video to do next. See you later, guys.